This video demonstrates how to properly shim any Z series pump. This includes all models Z2000, Z3200, Z3500, Z4200, and Z4500. Please refer to the applicable installation, operation, and maintenance manuals for detailed information and maintenance schedule on these pumps. The IOM manuals may be downloaded from Corkin's website at corkin.com. Please note these important safety tips. Periodic inspection and maintenance of the pump is essential. Equipment installation, operation, and maintenance should only be performed by qualified personnel. All procedures must comply with the Corkin installation, operation, and maintenance manuals, applicable local codes, and safety standards. The transfer of toxic, flammable, or explosive substances is always at the user's risk. Review the installation, operation, and maintenance manuals before performing any maintenance procedures. Typically, the only time a cork and sliding vein pump is shimmed is before it leaves the factory, after installing major components, or installing a full rebuild kit. Since rebuild kits include a rotor shaft assembly, cam, side plates, and cover, the stacking order of these parts may differ from the original parts, causing the rotor to rub against one of the side plates. To ensure the proper clearance between the rotor and side plates, shims are added to each bearing cap. The shims keep the bearing caps from pushing the rotor into the side plates or thrust bearing assembly on the opposite side. Note that shimming is not required after installing a cork and repair kit. However, if the rotor shaft assembly is reversed, the pump must be reshimmed. Each rebuild kit comes with eight red 2000 shims, two brown 10,000 shims, and two yellow 20 thousandths shims. A combination of these shims is used to achieve the proper clearance between the rotor and side plate on each side of the pump. You will also need a 9 16 wrench or ratchet and socket and a set of thickness or feeler gauges for checking clearance. Since this pump is fully assembled, begin by removing the bearing caps and existing shims from each side of the pump. Note the quantity and color of shims being used on each side. Remember, when installing a repair kit, reshimming is not typically required. Make sure the thrust bearings and mounting rings remain on both sides of the shaft and inside the pump covers as shown. The shimming specifications are plus six thousandths on one side and plus two thousandths on the opposite side. It does not matter on which side you begin. Choose either side of the pump and reinstall one bearing cap without the shims. Make sure the bearing cap is flush against the pump head. Secure the bearing cap with two bolts and tighten with fingers. This forces the rotor against the side plate on the opposite side. Use the thickness gauge to measure the gap between the bearing cap and the pump head at multiple points as shown. This gap establishes a baseline for zero clearance. The gap should be the same at all points. If not, the bearing cap is not mounted flush with the pump head. The gap measures 23 thousandths. Always round up to the next even number. So, in this case, the baseline for zero clearance between the rotor and side plate is 24 thousandths. The operating clearance for the first side needs to be six thousandths. To establish the operating clearance of six thousandths, add shims that brings the total amount of clearance between the bearing cap and the pump head to thirty thousandths. Twenty-four thousandths baseline clearance plus six thousandths equals thirty thousandths worth of shims that need to be added. Shim the pump using a combination of shims totaling thirty thousandths. For example, you could use one yellow 20,000 shim and one brown 10,000 shim. Or, to allow for finer adjustments in the future, you can use one yellow 20,000 shim and five red 2,000 shims, which still accomplishes 30,000 worth of shimming. Remove the bearing cap 
and add the 30 thousandths shim pack. To hold the shims in place, insert a bolt through one of the holes in the bearing cap and slide it over the shaft. Install the remaining bolts and tighten in a cross pattern to the torque value listed in the installation, operation, and maintenance manual. After the bearing cap has been secured, make certain the pump shaft turns freely by hand. Now repeat these steps on the opposite side of the pump. Using two bolts, attach the bearing cap without any shims and tighten with fingers. This causes the rotor to force the thrust bearing against the bearing cap on the opposite side of the pump. Use the thickness gauge to measure the gap between the bearing cap and the pump head at multiple points as shown. This establishes a baseline for zero clearance. The gap should be the same at all points. If not, the bearing cap is not mounted flush with the pump head. The gap measures 24 thousandths. This is an even number so no adjustment is needed. So in this case, the baseline for zero clearance between the rotor and shaft bearing on the opposite side is 24 thousandths. The operating clearance for the second side needs to be 2 thousandths. To establish the operating clearance of 2 thousandths, add shims that brings the total amount of clearance between the bearing cap and the pump head to 26 thousandths. 24 thousandths baseline clearance plus 2 thousandths equals 26 thousandths worth of shims that need to be added. Shim the pump using a combination of shims totaling 26 thousandths. In this example, use one yellow 20 thousandths shim and three red 2 thousandths shims to accomplish 26 thousandths worth of shimming. Remove the bearing cap and add the 26 thousandths shim pack. To hold the shims in place, insert a bolt through one of the holes in the bearing cap and slide it over the shaft. Install the remaining bolts and tighten in a cross pattern to the torque value listed in the installation, operation, and maintenance manual. After the bearing cap has been secured, make certain the pump shaft turns freely by hand. Before placing the pump back into service, lubricate the pump with a low temperature ball bearing grease with a minimum rating of minus 25 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. The lubricant used by Corkin is Mystic JT6 Low Temperature Extreme Grease. This completes the procedure for how to shim a Z-Series sliding vane pump. Visit the website often for the latest technical updates and news on all of Corkin's products.